Okay, yo, poutine. Yeah. It's like I'm addicted. Are you just saying that? <laughs> no, no, like. <laughs> I, I can't I can't do what ifs like I need to know that I tried and I need to know that it, it worked or that it didn't work and it's like okay because now if it doesn't work then I can do house and be like okay well it's not like what if I did this what if I did that like this is it you end up DJing at a club for your first time and then I'm like okay well hold on okay now I did it now I want to DJ at a bigger club like I want to DJ at a new city for example yeah. you know like I want I want that to happen and I always try to make them like like realistic you know what i mean because if you're setting goals that are too crazy or too fucked up and then you're just gonna get discouraged on yourself when like it's taking yeah. too long to reach them you know and i'm really 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 excited for 2021 we just started bro and it's like i'm already on a roll and like if i can keep this up the whole year bro i'd do anything to perform again bro like i just wanna yeah. i just wanna spin what's up guys i'm relax josh and you guys are watching low-key mtl <laughs> So I wanted to start with asking about like your background. So like, yeah. do you have like family in music or are you the first one in your family to get um, into music? My dad was like always really musical. Okay. Uh, he played guitar, played piano when he was younger. And like he kind of got me into guitar. Like when I was younger, I, I took guitar lessons with him, okay. played drums with him, tried piano, but didn't really like it. But then when I turned like 11 or 12, my cousin who's a year older than me was DJing. And then he ta taught me how to DJ. And then I just like fell in love with DJ and like fully like it was every day wake up before school DJ come home DJ just okay. DJ 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 for like okay so you're like one of the lucky ones that just figured it out really young early. yeah really young and I just yeah. like it, it at that point when at that age it wasn't really like oh I want to make it I want to do this like I just genuinely had the most fun ever like you know I thought it was so cool I had my little thing bro this big two did by you, four so you bought it or did you get it as bought a gift? it for like a hundred bucks not even okay I think probably my dad helped me or something yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. like a tiny little yeah. like a little you know table, yeah. yeah like the, like the smallest <laughs> thing bro you know yeah. and it was just it was cool like it was just I had so much fun DJing and so much fun just like fucking around with it that mm -hmm. like I just, at one point I wanted to take it serious, you know? Mm. What about it as a kid did you like it? Were you like controlling crowds already or like? Like, it's just like, it, it's funny cause like, from the age that I was a kid, like I've always loved music. Like music as just like listening to music and like singing and like, bro, yeah, like yeah. you know what I, I just like love like music. Into yeah, that, I yeah, tapped yeah, into it yeah. super young. And when I started DJing, like, it's funny cause like I'm DJing in my basement at like 13 years old with mm -hmm. like obviously nobody there, like, you know, songs like, Whatever was hot at the time, like all Martin Garrix, like Alesso, like Swedish House Mafia, all that stuff. Yeah. And I'm bro, I'm pretending like I'm in front of Ultra, like you know what <laughs> I mean? Just like I, I just like I've always been like that. And like to this day, to be honest, like when I'm practicing or producing or DJing or mm -hmm. whatever in the studio, like even if there's no one there, if I'm into it, I'm like I'm up, I, like like I'm performing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like I don't know. It's been it's just been like that forever. Like it's just really like something that I just like I've always just like I have so much fun doing it that like why would I do like something else, you know, and I can yeah. just do that and like have sure. it. So like when you're uh, growing up, like before like you even started playing at clubs and stuff, mm -hmm. were you just like at like house parties and like trying so, to yeah. take every opportunity? Exactly, or? yeah. Okay. So it's actually so cool to talk about because I haven't spoken about it or thought about it in a mm -hmm. while, but like I grew up, I, I was DJing like house parties, like every house party that any of my friends had, I was DJing at like 15, 16. Uh, and by, by, by then, did you already have like the name Relax Josh going? No, no. Okay. By then, like it was just Josh's DJing type okay, thing, okay, you know? Okay. And I, it was just like, I, I wasn't, like I was taking it serious in terms of how I was practicing, but I mm -hmm. didn't really have a brand, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was just practicing getting better and I was doing uh, house parties, like little things like that, like with all my friends and like around like the community, whatever. And yeah. then I started DJing like bar mitzvahs, weddings, like private okay, events, so corporate yeah. events, also around 15 and 16 or whatever so this is just from like people hearing of you and, like, yeah you and, and it really became like just especially in like the corporate and bar mitzvah and like yeah, yeah, wedding yeah. world it was really just word of mouth like mm -hmm. i didn't have a brand i didn't have anything it was oh this kid djs and like he's really good whatever like he's, he's a great time he's cheap he's this he's that mm -hmm. like you know and then yeah i say like why not yeah I think, did you like the corporate environment i, I still do it <laughs> like i'll still do it to this day like okay, dope. Yeah. it's just you know what i mean if it's if like it's the best job, you know what yeah. I mean. So you've like, done weddings, you said. Yeah, done like, a lot has of there any, Has there ever been like some crazy situation that happened at a wedding? Um, where like you had some kind of like memory of like, not not at a wedding, but I do remember one time a mm -hmm. crazy thing is I was DJing this guy's party mm -hmm. that a friend of mine hooked up for me. He's like, "Yo, it's my friend's birthday. We're throwing a surprise party. This that, come DJ, no problem." I show up there, whatever, I'm DJing. It's like a small little thing. It's like maybe 30, 40 people mm -hmm. um, pre-corona. <laughs> mm -hmm, and uh, everyone's like getting wasted, whatever. He comes in, it's a huge surprise. The guy's already wasted. And like now every time I'm doing like a cool transition, he comes up to me and gives me 50 bucks. 
And after the first time, I'm like, okay, bro, like I can't take your fifty. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I'm already getting paid. Like you don't need to give me every time. And yeah. I ended up making an extra like three hundred bucks. Three fifty. Every night. transition. Like whenever there was like a crazy one, he just come up to me, put his hand in his <laughs> take. I'm like, bro, I can't take this. And then at a certain point, like he wouldn't stop till I took it. You know. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay. At a certain point, where you're like, yo, I'm gonna just bang these. Transitions. Yeah, I was like, yo, I was like, what song you wanna hear next? <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, just like catering straight to him. You know, that's crazy. And then, how did Ilsa Nick happen afterwards? Ilsa Nick, bro, I Were actually... Were you already playing at clubs before Ilsa Nick? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. I was playing at clubs. Um, Ilsa Nick happened because there's a Wavo contest that they do every year. Right, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. the winner gets the, the opening slot and, like, this whole thing and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I had entered that contest the year before I won. So, I, I entered it in 2018 mm -hmm. and it came in, like, 26th or something. Like, something like nothing. And then, 2018 was the first year you competed? Yeah, the okay. first year I competed in, in that one. And then the, the year after, I was like, hey, oh, fuck it. Like, I'm winning it this year. Like, I really want it. Like, this is going to be big for me, whatever. I yeah. had, I had a, like, between 2018 and, and between the first contest and the, the second one, 2019, mm -hmm. I had three songs released. Okay. So it's like, I have three songs released. It's like, a, I'm an artist now. Like, I can do it. And I literally just spent for two weeks, bro. I messaged literally every single person I've ever come across, like, in my life. Like, even if I met them once, I'm like... Please, bro, vote for my mix, this, that. Like, two weeks straight on the computer all day, not leaving the just house without the computer, the not, DMing, like, yeah. just pure... Me you, I got banned on Instagram, I got banned on Twitter, I got banned mm -hmm. on Facebook for spam. Just yeah, because yeah, I keep yeah. messing... And I'm writing, like, pretty much the same thing on every single one, yeah. like, changing it up a bit, depending on who yeah, I'm Yeah, exactly, yeah. But, like, for the most part, bro, I'm copy-pasting, yo, please vote for my mix. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it would mean the world to me if I get to win, I play it, it's like this, that. Yeah. I get banned on this account. I'm using Luca's account, I'm using <laughs> my friend's account, I'm using their Facebook, I'm using their Twitter, I'm using yeah. everything, they're getting banned, like, to the point where I message, I must have messaged at least four to 5,000 people total. And I, and I think I ended up finishing with like 1.5K votes. Okay, sick. And... That was 2019. 2019. That was, yeah, and I ended up finishing in second place. Okay. Someone else finished with a bit more votes than me. Okay. But I still ended up winning, which is cool. Okay, sick, yeah. And... Wait, how, how did that happen? I think they choose. I don't think it was necessarily whoever has the most votes win. Is who could also because like, think set. about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, think about sense. it. Like, if I can get a million votes, but my mix is garbage, like, yeah. they're still not gonna put. You True. know, not saying that his mix was yeah, garbage. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I get what you mean. If you're still I mean? like in the in like the early stages yeah, of like, exactly. mixing and you don't know what you're doing, like it exactly. could fuck it up. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, so with that being said, yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, so I assume I'm, like that. That pro that's probably one of like the craziest experiences yeah, that you was had, crazy. right? That was like it gave you like a little taste of what was it, there. Exactly, you know? and it was so cool because like I remember like the first year Ilsene came out was I'm pretty sure it was 2014, mm -hmm. and that was the first like edition of Ilsene. And I remember I, I was I think 17 or or even 16, and I was just like, yo, like one day I'm gonna play at this festival. Like like this is sick. Like this, this is Montreal's yeah, like yeah. house festival. Like this is what I want to do. Like bro, I'm gonna do it. And then when that opportunity came up, I was like. Okay, it's fully now or never. You know what I mean? Like yeah. last year, like I fucked around. Twenty eighteen, I did it. I got a bit of votes, this that. But mm -hmm. this year, it's like I'm winning. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah, I really just, I really, I went a thousand percent as for that whole two or three week window of like get the votes, get as many votes as you can. I really went crazy, like nonstop. yeah, and you got it. It's sick. Yeah, it was, like, it was super cool. Like it yeah. was cool to see it like pay off. You know, and like yeah. I, I really believed that I was gonna win, and like I, I, I don't know. So when cool. when that happened, like did did like I guess it's like it's like a pretty early uh, milestone in your career mm -hmm. for sure. But like, did you see any changes happen with like maybe like clout or like friends? For sure, like, right after. For right sure, after, yeah. It was super cool because I got when when I won. Mm -hmm. um, what actually happened is because they because they needed my logo for the flyer. Yeah. They told me like two days before the contest ended that I won, so like I was freaking out. Whatever, I was like super happy. And then, um, like, everybody's, on the day that they release the lineup, like, the actual lineup, everybody's posting about it. They see my thing, they're freaking out, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my friends are calling me, this, that. Like, on Instagram, I'm getting notification, this, this, followers, random, mm -hmm. whatever. And then, I was actually living downtown, like, during that summer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, sometimes I'd be going out, like, but this was before Yosa Nick, and, like, I was, I'm walking through or whatever and like passing a club and someone goes, hey, relax, Josh, like screaming yeah. and turning around like, and I'm, and I'm like, I'm like, yo, like what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like how? Like, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And then I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, like that happened a couple times and then it's more like, you, you started to see more support and actually what came like, I actually met a lot of people like at Yosinik mm -hmm. also 
and like around the whole scene there, I met more people and I ended up getting more gigs after also. Right, yeah. Like yeah. I, I ended up becoming tight with some of the people from Miguel Frosh also. Right. Too. And I ended up doing Frosh gigs after Ilse Nate. Yeah, that's a good gig because yeah, your network is sick when you're in Exactly, the and you're going with all the Miguel kids, a yeah, bunch yeah. of young kids, you know? It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Perfect. Um, and like, like well, in producing, like, um, do people like help each other out because i know in like in the photography world like when you want to learn something you would go out and shoot with like your buddies mm -hmm. you know and like say you're producing is it kind of like the same thing where like you help each other out like, for sure and you like teach each other things and yeah stuff? like i i started producing when i was about 17. Mm -hmm. so i had been djing way before that and i kind of wanted to take the next step and i knew that producing would be the next step yeah and i'm really lucky like my cousin also produces the same one who taught me how to dj okay same, shout out yeah. coco yeah. <laughs> showing me was good <laughs> um but yeah oh, and, should dj coco yeah oh shit, that's your cousin yeah first right. cousins okay no worries. yeah it's fire and um like wasn't he djing for agento and stuff a1 gento or whatever? uh i'm not sure and now he's with he nate like produced nate he Hesser. like produced for him in the back back of the days like i remember running into him in uh a1 gento at, like house parties and stuff like yeah that. yeah, that's that's right. yeah bro it's crazy <laughs> um but yeah and uh but yeah he, he taught you a lot of like, so yeah he taught me a lot of producing like in the beginning i had a lot of questions i was asking him luca was also producing at the time okay uh and i would it's like I, i'm lucky because I found really since the day I started producing, I really had like a few, like three or four people like that really were like supporting me and that like knew how to produce and shit. And like, if I ever really needed a question, it's like, no hesitate, like I'll call them, you know? Right. And yeah, we ended yeah. up making a group called Producer Friends where there's like three or four of us. And okay. it's like, send your stuff in it, talk about it all. What do you think I could do with this? Yeah. And, and like, that's, that's cool. Cause like that way there's, it's a constructive criticism. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, and it's by people that, that like it's cool because you want people that know music like in the sense that you want people who can tell you technically oh like your bass is too muddy or this is too that or whatever exactly, yeah. and then you want people like general audience who like the people listening to music like they're not going to tell you your bass is too muddy you know what i mean they're just be like yeah the song's good or the song's bad exactly you know? yeah, yeah so it's like good to have people like that and then and then like, you know but then there's also friends. like the sort of saying so like once you have like a bit of clout there's a bunch of yes men right that, like, yeah that's so also that true but, your but honestly even even before like a tiny bit of clout or whatever like mm -hmm. I, you always have a yes or, or a yes man or like someone who's just gonna be like yeah it's hard and like yeah, yeah. you know the more I've been showing because like I'm also one of those people like there are a lot of, there's different types of artists you know mm -hmm. like some artists like will never show you their stuff before it's done and like I'm the type of guy that like once I make it I'm like so hyped that I made it and I love it and I'm like I'm sending it to five people and it's like not even the final mix and I'm just like asking for oh, opinions yeah, okay, or whatever yeah, yeah, you yeah. know and I'm just kind of like I just want to get like an idea of where people's heads are at like around the project but like yeah I'm surprised because usually like the other thing is like a song is that a track is never like complete right you could always that's like, like two exactly and, and and that's a huge thing that's a problem that a lot of producers have is like a lot of them will be like oh like, it's not done like, i could do this i could do that like look yeah you could like at the end of the day you're, there's always gonna be something you could do there's literally endless possibilities like producing on logic on all these programs like you can literally do anything you know what yeah. i mean it's at what point do you go okay Fuck this, bro. I've been done. I've been on this track for too long. Like it's done, you know. No matter what, like at a certain point, you're changing like little tiny things that like yeah. the average listener will never listen, like never tell, you know. Do you have any tracks that you just haven't released because you're just not like? Oh my god, bro, millions, like like at least like. Do you think you would ever go back to them and like tune it up? Instead? It's like it's weird because it's like sometimes like I like I have songs like the actual song that I made hmm. like let's say a year ago it's like super catchy the lyrics are good the bass is good this is that is good hmm. but it's like a year ago I'm way worse I was way worse of a producer than I am now True, and yeah. it's like when I try to go back like I produced it differently and I still can't necessarily get the sound that I want and I'm not gonna f just release it to release it type thing you know I'd rather just keep it scrap it whatever and take what I learned scratch. and make something new, something that I know I'm gonna love. The way that I can produce, like the way that I produce now, okay, you know what okay. I mean. So it's just like way too much of an effort to like, like fix all those things versus just like, restart. Like I wouldn't necessarily say way too much of an effort, but sometimes like it's just not possible. You know what I mean? Okay. Sometimes like I mixed it a certain way or I recorded it a certain way or like there'll be times when I'd I'd record a song a week ago mm. and like I'm in I'm having like a writer's block or whatever and I can't finish it and I take a break and I come back like a week later and like. I don't, my voice doesn't even sound the same almost, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you can't really force it, you know? Like if you're not feeling it, well, for me at least, and it depends on, obviously everybody's different. Mm -hmm. But for me, if like, if I'm not feeling it, if I'm not super down, if I'm not super hyped, then like, I can't force myself to make a song that like, I think might be good, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I need to be in the vibe like, yo, this is gonna be fire, or like, 
this is hard or this is cool or onto something this has a lot of potential and then from there like I could spend like the rest of the day just on it like hours mm -hmm. and hours like not leave you know so you're saying writer's blocks so I'm assuming like does this have something to do with Huda like are you rapping yeah on? well uh, well, I'm doing I'm doing two projects right now I have Relax Shots which I've been doing forever DJing house music tech house bass house uh, whatever and Huda's actually a project I started recently um, Huda is pure rap and hip hop music like okay. singing auto tune like emo rap vibes okay um, are you like are you gonna be vocals as well yeah it's me on the vocals and everything okay. like hip-hop is something that like i've always loved also like growing up like i said before like i've always really liked music just in general but like every genre you know and like okay. i was listening to like guns and roses and the rolling stones and then like bill withers and like frank sinatra and then like other things and, and then it became like as obviously time got on and i went older whatever was coming out it was hot it became edm yeah. and house yeah, yeah and you know and like i i also find that's kind of common for like just people of montreal like our, our genres is, is, is very like vague yeah because we don't really have like montreal is not known for a genre exactly right? and 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 it's weird like besides like the french like rap and like that scene yeah. like it doesn't have its own like sound like you know what yeah I mean? we don't like, have a sound it's like true. we have a catronada i guess but yeah like, we still have, not but, but that's that's one guy you know what yeah. i mean we yeah. don't have like a couple people like toronto for example like you know toronto has that toronto sound you know what i'm yeah, saying like yeah, you yeah. can tell almost you know yeah, and there's like a bunch of rappers coming up from toronto and like you know true yeah but uh yes yeah, so huda so but yeah so so huda is just me it's me basically singing and rapping <laughs> with autotune <laughs> and uh and you sick you could, <laughs> it's because you could produce your own stuff so yeah like it's you, cool you I'm, can literally I'm make fully, a whole thing start yeah to finish, and right? that's it and I'm, I'm fully i'm recording it i'm mixing it i'm mastering it i'm writing it i'm doing i'm pretty much doing the whole thing most mm -hmm. of the beats i find on youtube or somebody's sending them to me you know okay okay and um but yeah, so, but the reason, like, I've always loved rap music just as much as I loved house. And I would go kind of through phases when I was younger in the sense of, like, starting from, let's say, age nine, like, nine to, like, 12, I was, like, mm -hmm. super into, like, Eminem and, like, 50 Cent and, like, all, like, I wanted to be a rapper, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, well, Martin Garrix drops Animals when I'm, like, 13 or 14, and then uh, Swedish House Mafia is on the scene now, and now I want to be a DJ just as I start learning how to DJ. Still love rap, obviously, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but, like, I'm super into, like, the big room EDM scene. And then... I'm 16, 17, and now it's like Uzi and like Future and like Young Thug and all these guys are starting to come up and I'm like, yo, these guys are hard and I have a super crazy rap phase again, you know? And I'm yeah. kind of going back and forth and back and forth. And then when I'm 20, 21, Fisher and like Chris Lake and all yeah, these guys yeah. are coming out and I'm like, yo, this is too hard. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fire, you know? And like, yeah, yeah. I'm making house again and I'm like, kind of like... But that, I feel that makes like a good artist because like, for yeah. example, like Post Malone even, if you take him as an example, mm -hmm. like... His background in music is so vague. For that, sure, like, his his sound just is. It's always influenced by exactly, so much. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, that, and that's also like something that I like. I take pride in my music. Also, the same thing like you just said. Like, I've just influenced by so many artists. Like, good music for me is good music. Like, it, I don't care if it's dubstep. I don't care if it's jazz. I don't exactly. Care if it's, yeah. Like, whatever, just you know? it, yeah. So. If it if it's well made, if it's catchy, if it sounds good, like I'm gonna love it. You know, and I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna roll with it. So then I, I honestly I was going through a whole thing of like well. Do I want to be a rapper? Do I want to be a DJ? And I have people in my ear telling me, you can't do both. And then I have people in my ear telling me, we'll do rap. And then I have other people telling me, we'll be a DJ. And I'm kind of like, I'm like about to go crazy type thing, like mm -hmm. thinking about it. And then I'm like, yo, fuck it. I'm like, at the end of the day, there's no point, there's no reason I can't do both until like I can't do both. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas let's say like, bro, if I'm feeling house, wake up, make a house banger, like chill, relax, whatever. And then if I'm feeling rap, wake up, make some rap shit, chill. And like, Bro, release some shit on the rap, do some shit with house. Exactly, and like, yeah. bro, if like I pop off as a rapper, if I pop off as a, a DJ, it's like, okay, like, bro, you, you'll be or able to both. Talk. Like, what's, or, what's, I find it's really like a, a thing of today's days, like people that do multiple different things. Yeah, or, like, for sure. And fucking and, Logan Paul is fighting. Uh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? like, so, like, that's the new but thing. But that's it. Yeah. yeah, there's no, like, there's no boundaries really, you know? So, exactly. that's why I really didn't want to have to limit myself to one genre. And also, like, let's say I were to choose house. Mm -hmm. And let's say I choose house and I go, Five years later, I go fuck, man. Like I really wish I tried to be a rapper. Like who knows? You yeah, know you don't I mean? want what ifs in your life. I, I can't. Sure. I yeah, can't yeah. do what ifs. Like I need to know that I tried, and I need to know that it, it worked or that it didn't work. And it's like okay, because now if it doesn't work, then I can do house and be like, okay, well, it's not like what if I did this? What if I did that? Like this is it, you know? Or yeah. that's it, or whatever. No matter what, you're. It's people are gonna be curious, and if that's it's good it, music, exactly. it's good music, like you exactly. said. So like I don't see why you shouldn't like pursue that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but why did you choose to have it as like a, under a different name? Um. I wanted to do under a different name because I didn't. Uh, the songs that I have under Relax Josh are very like housey, like you know, super like four and four, like, okay, yeah. EDM sounds and everything. And I thought that like it'd be too much of a shock if I just dropped like 
uh, like a complete like a song like for me for me is a song I just yeah, dropped, yeah. Uh, uh, under Huda okay. like if I were to drop that under relax Josh it'd be way too much of a shock I thought in the sense of like people are like okay well hold on I thought this guy was a DJ you know mm-hmm. and like they're right I am a DJ but like I'm also a, yeah, a rapper yeah. you know so you don't so, want them to be confused yeah right? I didn't want to necessarily, necessarily confuse people I didn't also necessarily want Huda to be completely detached from like me from yeah. like Josh but like I wanted it to be different from relax Josh in a sense right. but I also wanted it to be like Okay, he's relaxed, Josh, and he's also Huda. Like he can do both type thing, you know? Yeah, it's cool. it's it's more organized. Like, more too. organized yeah. a bit. It's like it's like if I drop under Huda, you know what you're getting, you know? And if yeah. I drop under relaxed, Josh, you know what you're getting, you know? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. I was gonna ask you about like Instagram because like I see you on Instagram like always like cooking up in the studio. So mm-hmm. you, got, you got some new stuff coming out, I'm assuming. Yeah, heavy. Uh, yeah. Right now, I have under under relaxed, Josh, I'm purely just cooking, just making shit, trying to. Perform really perfect my sound mm-hmm. that's why i haven't released anything under so yeah Rock covid like is that what you've been doing oh, yeah. this whole time yeah I, have, okay. it, I started off covid like during that first like early summer lockdown like right when it started when like actually no one's leaving their crib like mm-hmm. i was fully i was locked in i, I started i was doing a lot a lot of like as soon as COVID, did you already know you're okay i'm just gonna use this time to yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I was like bro if i can't do it now i'll never do it i'm at home all day doing nothing yeah you're you know? like uh, in, it's yeah. like i'm waking up like if i'm waking up and not doing it and it's like bro at that point i had my my studio set up like literally in my room like right next to my like right next to my room in my crib so I'm okay like, bro if i can't do it now when am i gonna do it you yeah. know so i'm doing like four or five, six hours a day. And then as COVID like eased up, I was still like maintaining that, that type of energy. And then I actually got a, an actual studio, like not in my house type thing. I okay. found a place. And ever since I had that, I've had that for about like two and a half months. And like- Does that change up to your work dynamic? Cause like you're going somewhere to get it. Yeah, 10, I, I've, I've been on a roll, I think the past, pretty much since I got it, that, mm-hmm. I, that I, I've tapped into a level that I haven't tapped in before. And that's why I'm really excited for like, people to hear Huda and people to like see what's good with this project that I'm starting because mm-hmm. like I've really I've been doing like bro ever since I got the studio outside of my house it just it feels more like work you know like mm-hmm. I don't feel like I'm out of bed and then I'm right there and it's just like I'm chilling you know mm-hmm. it's but yeah like, I actually want to ask you like when we're talking about Osanic so once Osanic happened did you like all of a sudden feel like a, a whole new level of like accountability for like music and do you start grinding a lot more since yeah. then? You're just, it's just, it's like a motivation push. You it know? did, right? And yeah, it's yeah. just like, it's like, well, well, look, this was my goal and I achieved it. And like, if I can do this, what else can I do? Exactly. You, you know? kind of like, you you open that first door and you're like, shit, like how many yeah, doors and are I, there? Yeah, and know? I always try to like, ever since I'm young, like, like I've always tried to like, my next goal is like, that I'm setting for myself, whatever it be, mm-hmm. like whatever it may be, is like, not too far off to the point that like it's unattainable and like i'll get discouraged like spending so much time trying to reach it i try to make them more like you know what i mean like okay so if it's i have like a realistic yeah. like yeah exactly like okay like my first goal i remember when i was super young was man i'd love to dj at a club and then it's like okay that's like it's like realistic it's not not impossible you mm-hmm. know i'm like 15 16 saying this and then you end up DJing at a club for your first time, and then I'm like, okay, well, hold on, okay, now I did it. Now I want to DJ at a bigger club. Like I want to DJ at a new city, for example. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I want, I want that to happen. And I always try to make them like, like realistic. You know what I mean? Because if you're setting goals that are too crazy or too fucked up, and then you're just gonna get discouraged on yourself when like it's taking yeah. too long to reach them. Exactly. You know? Long term goals, I, I, I still, I'm a big believer in long term goals. Also, do you write, do you write it down? And like, yeah, different? sometimes okay. I do. Okay, yeah, sick. for sure. That's actually something I started doing recently. Mm-hmm. Like something like, and another thing I'll do like to really like. Not, not, not like put pressure on myself, but like to really get me going is like, I'll tell like a friend or example, or I'll be yeah, like, yeah, yo, yeah. by June 1st, this, hold me accountable. I'm telling you right now, uh, 20,000 monthly listeners or whatever mm-hmm. it is, you know what I mean? Whatever the goal may be and like, hold me accountable to this. Like, yeah, cause like sometimes they say to, doing that is bad too. Cause like, if you talk about it or voice something. Exactly. Thing, but it's true. Like if you say, tell a few people that. Yeah, like, like close friends. Close you know, friends people that are like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. They're gonna like like rip on your. Yeah, exactly. And not yeah. people that are gonna be like, oh, like he said he's gonna do this. Yeah, yeah. What he's doing? Like he didn't do it, you know? Or like, mm-hmm. no, more more just like people that I trust, like people that want to see me do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like close friends, like family. You know, like this is the year. This is the month. This is this. Like I'm really going crazy, you know? And I'm really, really, really excited for 2021. We just started, bro, and it's like I'm already on a roll, and like if yeah. I can keep this up the whole year, bro. Yeah, yeah, that that momentum is for sure. Like, yeah, exactly. Thing. Yeah, would you take the vaccine as soon as it's out? I think so, bro. I mean, just like 
for population sake, I get. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm allergic to peanuts, and apparently, okay. like people with severe allergies can't get it or something. Oh, really? I, like I read that. I don't know if it's true, but like, look. Apparently, I also heard like if you're pregnant, you shouldn't. Yeah, take like it. I don't know. I heard like I don't know. Look, if I could get it, I'll yeah. get it for sure. You know, I also want. I also, like, by the time we get it, we're the last ones to get. Exactly, we're so. like the exactly. Everyone will have it already. Yeah, you know? and like I'm pretty desperate to go back to real life. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I do anything to perform again, bro. Yeah. Like, I just want to. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to spin. Have you done any like live? sets or anything because i know a lot of djs i did that. bro honestly i did one like quick live stream like early quarantine like on just, youtube or? like not even on insta live i think just okay, like, okay. set my phone up and i was spinning but like i was gonna do another one and but i i just like i really really wanted to work on perfecting my my sound you know yeah. like i wasn't i was obviously happy with the songs that i put out like i'm happy that i was at that phase in like my production career but like i'm not happy with how they sound sonically you know right, what i mean yeah, like, yeah. especially with the stuff that i'm making now like i'm way more like okay bro this is not even comparable to the stuff i'm making now like i'm gonna take a height like a break like a hiatus whatever it is and yeah like, it makes sense it's not like really gonna, just perfect it. yeah it's not yeah. like you're gonna like people are gonna forget about you or anything, that's the right? thing and it's also not like i was like super super massive where like people are going where's the new stuff yeah, like, yeah you know yeah, what yeah. i mean it's like at it's the end actually of the, day, the perfect time yeah exactly. exactly if i didn't do it now and it's like you know yeah, yeah. that's exactly it all right well on another note like um do you have like any low-key like food spots that you would recommend for montrealers like, um not montrealers or outsiders Cause like like or like poutine that slaps. Okay, like oh, poutine. Yeah. It's like I'm addicted. I love it. I <laughs> love poutine, bro. I can eat poutine all day. Are you just saying that? <laughs> no, no. Like, my, That's so it's much like a love. running joke with like all my friends. It's like this guy's addicted. It's like gravy in his veins, like type thing. Oh, you know? actually, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I love what's, poutine. <laughs> what's like what's a good place that slaps so much that not a lot of people know about? Time. My like. classic for a poutine, my go-to is is Bell Pro. I'll be honest. Okay, okay. Fire. And they're massive, bro. Like, when you have them there, they're like this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stacked up. I'm like, yeah. 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 <laughs> a good bang for your buck. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, fully. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yo, um, there's a sick, fi- there's a fire pizza place that just opened up also. Oh, Casarita. Yeah. Uh, my boy works there. And my other friend started it. Okay, sick. Um, Where? Super fire. It's in Beaconsfield. Okay. Like, really, really good. What is it called? Pizzeria Casarita. Okay, cool, cool. Fire, bro. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm done to check it out. Yeah. Have, have you been to that Bonquise? Yeah, yeah. Also yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, sure. I was actually there like uh, a couple of days ago, actually. Yeah, uh, I hadn't. Uh, near it. I hadn't been in a while. I've been like three or four times, but bro, every time I go, fire. Bro, <laughs> last time fire. I went, they're just playing straight dubstep in there. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah sick. They play bangers, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they know yeah. how to get me to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, it looks like a festival. It has a mask on too, and there's like, like small tiny little girls like serving. Too funny. <laughs> but yeah, well. You've been cooking up hard. I'm hard. gonna I'm gonna let you get back to work because I know you're gonna go up straight back to the studio. Yes, right sir. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I really appreciate no it. No problem, bro. Anytime. I had a great time. Yeah. It's such a vibe. Yeah, bro. you're always welcome back, bro, in the future. Thank like, you, bro. It'll be for sick sure. to see like different Progression. stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. That'd be crazy. Yeah, thanks for coming, yeah. man. No appreciate problem, it. bro. I appreciate it. Mm.